All right, folks, so time to uh, start getting this plane uh, actually put together, get it taken shape. Uh, what I've done is I've, I've de determined which is going to be the bottom of my plane, and I've drawn a line right down the very center of the back plate here. Uh, why this is going to be useful is uh, it's going to help us later on in the build when we go to align our motor to make sure that our motor is uh, dead center. And what I've also done is I've just kind of continued it around. I've made a very, just a very small little mark here on the top. This will, this will kind of let me know exactly where a dead center is along my hinge line here when I get ready to uh, hinge my, <coughs> pardon me, uh, put my elevons on. So what I'm actually going to do is that, uh, putting the wing plate together here is going to be uh, take several steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do as much work as I possibly can on uh, the pieces while they're still smaller before I put the uh, the large front piece uh, to, uh, together. Um, you know, just make it easier to manage. So what we're going to do in this first part here is we're going to actually hinge uh, our elevons, hinge and and, uh, and tape on our elevons. So I did a video a while back just with some scrap foam. Uh, which maybe you've watched already. It's in the same playlist as this, but I'm just going to demonstrate here anyway. So I've got a nice, very nice sharp blade in my knife, and because this uh, hinge line here is uh, longer than 12 inches, I'm going to use my metal uh, ruler. So I put the beveled part of my hinge on the bottom of my plane. So this is the top here, the top part of the plane. So I lay the ruler on the top of that, put it right on the very edge take my knife and just roughly at a 45 degree angle I just gently gently pull it along you can see it because my knife was nice and sharp my, my little bit has come out there so now I don't have exactly a 45 degree bevel here but I've got a bevel here which is going to allow my control surfaces to hinge and then what I'm going to do is again you know checking to make sure that I've, I've got my my elevons, so these, this is the top of my two elevons. Get this out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'll hinge my, or I'll bevel my two elevons as well. So same process, metal straight edge. Just a nice gentle pull. A couple times, there we go, that's done. Do the other one. I find to get the best quality hinges, it's always good to use, you know, a brand new sharp blade when you're when you're beveling these. It just makes it so much cleaner. Okay, so there we go. So now we can just kind of line that up. Um, all right. So I've actually now, after I've beveled them, yeah. So that's looking good. All right, so I'm going to use this. Uh, this is uh, transparent, clear, transparent duct tape, uh, which is what I'm going to use to uh, to make my hinges. It's the same stuff as I used in my video where I showed how I make my hinges. So I'm just going to measure real quick, find out how long my uh, my hinge is. So it's about six inches. So I'm going to cut myself a six-inch piece of tape. I find it's easiest to do it this way, just kind of lightly tack it on there, get my ruler lined up, find out where six inches is, cut it off, there we go. Okay. I, I, you could do these all in one, but I find, especially with this transparent duct tape, because it's, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty sticky, and once you get it put down, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough, you could end up damaging the foam. Trying to take it off. Okay, so we just essentially I just want to sort of split the tape down the center where the hinge line is, and then just start gently smoothing it out so I don't end up with any wrinkles or anything. Okay, so you notice now I've got some you know sticking out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of gently pull that back a little bit. I'm not gonna bother sanding the edges. Uh, on this plane or bev uh, beveling them like I do with, with some. So just, just pull it back like that. And then I'm just going to gently slide my knife along there and turn that off. Okay, and then press that on. So there's 
There's one of my Elevons hinged, and then I'll just do the other one real quick. Another six inch piece of tape. And just repeat, repeat the process like we did with the other one, making sure you got it nice and snug there. Press it down and then fold that back like that. And then just turn it off. Like so. Okay, so in my other video I actually uh, put uh, for insurance, I actually put um, more tape along the bottom here into the bellow part. I'm not gonna do that with this plane. I think we're going to be just fine. Now what you want to check here, I've got maybe a millimeter of space there between my two uh, elevons, the part that we sort of trimmed away already. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to very gently trim about another couple millimeters off, off each side. Then just so that, you know, because these are going to flex a little bit um, while you're flying and the plane's moving around. So what you don't want to have happen is is these, uh, is these things bind against each other right here. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to show you now is that, because I'm going to end up uh, putting reinforcement in my Elevons because this, this model plane foam is pretty flexible. So what I do now is I get my goodie bag here. I, I like to do this for all my builds. I sort of, you know, find all the parts that I need and I just put them in like a big freezer bag. And then, uh, you know, I know I'm not continually hunting around. So we're going to get a servo, and we're going to get a control horn. I'm just going to, I'll just demonstrate this on the, uh, on the one side. Okay, that's about all we need. Okay, so we're going to take the servo. This is a brand new servo. I'm just going to take this out. Okay, so what you want to do is, the, the servo is essentially going to go in uh, to the foam up to these flanges here. So... What I, what I like to do is I take a ruler and I just sort of measure, uh, you know, right from, from the bottom of these flanges so that where the foam is going to be up to sort of the very top of this, of this little uh, um, axle where the servo arm is going to go. So I'm just going to measure that quickly. So that is, on my servo, is about a half an inch. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So this is where, where these slots are. This is where, uh, the, the one in the front here is actually where the, the vertical stabilizer is going to come in from the top. And this is where, um, I'll, just, I'll just show you here, dry fit it. This is where sort of the bottom part of the, uh, of the nacelle is going to be. So the servo is actually going to be up in here somewhere. So what, we want, what we're doing here is to make sure that our... our um, um, our control arm gets placed properly so where that you know our, our, our control rod or push rod uh, runs fairly straight. So I'm just going to lay a ruler for reference right along the these these two slots like I just showed you there. So that's kind of my 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 reference. And then what I'm going to do is using this ruler, I know that the top of my um, servo is about a half an inch from the edge of the foam so I'm going to measure out a half an inch and I'm just going to make a bit of a line there okay it's easy, easy to do this now when it's uh, so that's this is essentially where uh, my control horn is going to go uh, when we when we get to that point and what you can do now is if you want to put you need to put reinforcement in your elevons is doing it this way now I know exactly sort of where my control horn is going to be and I don't end up putting, because uh, I, you know, I, the reason I've done this is I've done this before, where I've put my reinforcement in first, forgetting that I have to put my control horn in. Better to put the control horn in first, and then you can work your uh, reinforcement around it. I probably will only put a like a reinforcement piece of reinforcement along there. So that's that's a good thing. So just measure, like I said, take your servo, 
measure up to sort of the top of this little um, this little spindle where the uh, servo arm is going to go and that will give you a rough estimate of to, as to how far out your control rod or your push rod is going to be and then you can line up your uh, where your control arm is going to be that it's just going to make your life easier later later in the build okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that on the other side now while I remember and then I'll come back with you and we'll uh, put the uh, wing plate together all right, so time to join our, uh, the two pieces of our wing plate together. Now that we've got our, uh, our elevons uh, beveled and hinged, and I've marked where my control horns are going to go later on in the build, we've got the center of my back plate marked. Uh, so now we've got uh, the front part of our plane, and what we want to make sure is we're going to actually put the tape. I like to put the tape on the top, uh, so uh, match, you know, top, top on the front piece, top on the back piece. Now what you want to make sure you do before you get uh, gluing here, I've, I've uh, taken a couple pieces of wax paper uh, which is, is uh, you know, going to be, it's a little bit longer than the, than the actual wingspan of the plane. So we're going to be able to use this in, in uh, two steps. We're going to use it in this one first and then the next step is we're going to put our carbon reinforcement in the wing. So you want to have one piece laid down on your bench so that in case any of the epoxy, we're going to be using five minute epoxy, so that in case any of the epoxy oozes out from under the tape or whatever, you don't tape your plane to the bench. And then we're also going to have another piece that we're going to lay on top of the glue seam after we get that done. And I've got a couple of, uh, you know, fairly heavy books here handy that I'm going to lay down on top of it just to make sure that, you know, the piece is nice and flat as it, uh, as it dries. Okay, so this is the top, um, the top of the plane. And what we're going to do is we'll just get this, uh, get this nicely aligned. All right. Now, don't worry too much if there's, you know, there's a few little gaps here because, you, you know, your, your uh, cut wasn't exactly perfectly straight or whatever. It's not, it's not uh, too big a deal. Now, you can, if you want, just to make your life easier, um, is dollar store scotch tape. <laughs> um, Okay, so just to sort of tack it together, you can you can just pop on a little, a couple little bits of uh, mask or of uh, scotch tape here to hold it together till we put the masking tape on. Okay. All right. So what I'd like to do again, this is the top of the plane. So when you put this masking tape on, the masking tape is going to act like a hinge. So we're going to put this all the way, just sort of roughly pull off a piece here. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be colored, whatever. This is just what I had, and I think it just shows up a little easier here for demonstration purposes. So we just want to cover that entire seam. Just press the, press the tape down. So what it does is when the tape, you know, you're going to have some epoxy that's going to ooze through, but when you pull the tape off, you'll have a nice smooth uh, um, uh, glue line there. Okay. So now we're just gonna whoop, we're gonna lift it, and now what you can do is because that's a hinge, you just kind of flip that over, okay? So now you've got the two uh, two surfaces here. These two surfaces are are going to be glued together. All right. So before um, next thing you want to have ready, uh, I've got a little bit of wax paper here that I'm going to mix my epoxy on, and I've also got a couple of pieces of scrap foam because once we uh, sp it's we'll spread the glue. Uh, along this this uh, hinge line, the two faces, and then when we squeeze it closed, you know, some's going to ooze out, and then we'll use the scrap foam as well, the second piece of scrap foam to just kind of smooth it out and make sure that we've got epoxy pushed down in any gaps there, okay? So I'm just going to mix up some epoxy here real quick. You could use hot glue for this, but hot glue... Uh, it tends to stay more flexible than epoxy does and because we want to use this as sort of a backup to our carbon wing spar you know we want it we want it nice and strong and the epoxy is not going to add uh, a whole lot of weight either not in my experience anyway okay so we'll pop that back on so my epoxy will glue itself together all right and i'll just stir it up real quick with a toothpick i know this is awkward i'm left-handed and the camera is on the other side but you know, hopefully if, if you've used epoxy before. So just give it a nice stir for, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Make sure that the two components are, are nicely mixed. All right. So I'm 
I'm just going to get rid of this toothpick here so I don't glue it to something. Okay, so yeah, so we just get a little epoxy on there. And then, let's see if I can hold this so I can demonstrate. And then we're just going to kind of smear it on, oh, put some tape in the way there. We're just going to kind of smear it all along on both both sides of the uh, of the foam that are, we want essentially glued together. Okay, so again, don't be don't be shy here. If it oozes out when we fold the uh, the the wing plate flat again, we're going to be able to scrape it off with uh, with the other piece of scrap foam. Okay, so right, just get around there. Obviously, you don't want to glob, you know, half a pound of epoxy onto your plane, but um, make sure you've got a nice, even coat on, on both sides, all the way along. Okay, there we go. Alright, so then we, we uh, close our book, essentially. And again, making sure we've got our wax paper laid down. Um, because of the way this plane is, I'm going to have to angle it a little bit. There we go, get that tape flat so it doesn't bother anything. Okay, so I've got a few spots here where I've got some some gaps. So I'm just going to kind of fill those in with some extra epoxy. Okay. Again, this is why, you know, I, I like to put this part on the bottom because it, you know, it may not look terribly clean but when it's on the bottom of the plane you're not you know you're not going to you know people aren't going to see it and it won't mess up a, your paint job because I, I leave the bottoms of my planes white just for for ease okay so there we go we'll just scrape off as much of the excess as we can there we go okay so get the plane so that it's going to lay nice and flat. Take the other piece of wax paper now, lay that on top like that. And then I'm just going to take my two books and lay those down over top like that on the seam. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to let that uh, let that sit up. Actually, I'm just going to turn my plane here because I. Uh, I don't want to turn my chair and then rip part of my elephants off. <laughs> there we go. All right, folks. So yeah, we're just going to leave that. Um, you know, it's five minute epoxy, but uh, I, I like to leave it for a good, uh, you know, twenty minutes, uh, maybe half an hour or more, uh, because you know you, this is it's covered. And although epoxy is a chemical reaction, um, you know, give it a give it a good amount of time to really harden up and cure before you start handling the plane. Okay. So I'm just going to let that dry, and then uh, next up we're going to put in the, uh, we'll keep all this wax paper handy, and we're going to put in our uh, carbon reinforcement in the wing plate, all right? So we'll be back with you in a bit. All right, folks, uh, next up we're going to put the uh, carbon fiber uh, reinforcement in the wing plate. Um, I'm going to put mine, I've drawn a line, uh, essentially, or I just made a couple of marks, about halfway between this, uh, this slot here and uh, where we made our epoxy joint where we joined the two pieces together. Uh, so I've cut out a piece about 20 inches. I think that that's, uh, that that's going to be plenty long enough. And what I've done is I've taken like a silver sharpie and just marked the center of it to make sure that I know uh, where the center is going to be. So just before I get cutting that, I just wanted to show you, this is a, I guess another mod that I, that I like to make. Um, I've opened up the prop slot a little bit. It was angled down this way. So all I did was I went straight across where this part was here. I cut it straight across there, and then I, I can I, where it uh, comes down to a point here. I'm just going to draw a line straight across, and I'm eventually going to cut this out. What that does is it just it actually makes the plane uh, the prop more efficient, gives the prop more room to breathe, a little easier for the air to get to the prop and then come off the prop. And it's also going to make it uh, much quieter because the closer the prop is to the leading and trailing edge of the um, uh, of the prop slot, it, the plane is, is quite a bit louder. So uh, that's that's a modification, I guess, at this point, the second modification I'm going to make to this. But uh, I'll get that taken care of. All right. So again, I've done a video already on uh, on how I install reinforcement in foam. 
uh, which you can go watch. I just did that on some scrap pieces of foam, but I'm just going to show you again here today. So uh, I'm ready. I've got my piece of, uh, of wax paper that's going to be underneath my wing plate. I've got my second piece that's going to go on top. And uh, over here beside me, I've got my, uh, my two heavy books that I'm going to lay down. Because once I get this down into the foam, I'm going to lay, uh, lay those, you know, the wax paper and then the books down on top. And then just make sure that this uh, dries nice and, and straight and flat. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take this and uh, line it up with the two marks that I've made. Put my little mark sort of in the center. I'm going to take a pen and I'm just going to mark make a mark sort of the width of the of the rod on either end this is going to be a guide for me with my straight edge when I go to score the uh, score the foam okay so let's uh, just get this twisted around so get that lined up on the two front parts take my knife and just uh, you know, just gently running along here. We're only scoring maybe about halfway through the foam. This is just going to help us uh, pluck the foam out nice and clean. Uh, so we'll we'll have a channel to put the, uh, the carbon fiber. Okay, and then down on the bottom of the little mark that I made at the end of the rod, line it up again. Oops. Okay, there we go. Again, just you know, sort of scoring about halfway, halfway down. Okay. So I don't need this anymore. I'll get this out of the way. And then what I do is I just, you know, where I've made that little hole is I just make a little cut right at the end. All right. So we'll get our uh, get our screwdriver out here. I think I've got one that's a little bit wider. Yeah, here we go. So we'll just get our screwdriver out, and uh, we'll just uh, you know, nice and easy. We'll just go ahead and and pluck the pluck the foam out of the out of the channel there that we've just made. It's going to be super clean. We're gonna we're gonna press it down with the uh, with the rod after we get it out of there. Now sometimes I dig a little too deep and I go and I end up going right through the foam, so it's not going to look all that great on the on the top of the plane. But anyway, it's uh, we'll, we'll live with it. <laughs> so okay, just keep plucking that all along. Takes a little practice to get this, so you don't chew it up too bad. So, you know, you can always practice on some scrap foam if you've never uh, never done this before. And again, like I said, I did an entire video demonstrating this on uh, you know just a smaller smaller piece. Okay, so there we go. So let's get all these little scraps of foam out of the way, so we don't glue those back into the plane. All right. So what I like to do now is I, I just take the you know the one end of it and I just kind of gently run it along both in both directions just to sort of flatten that foam down and then just give it a bit of a dry fit make sure that it's that it's good to go okay so that looks that looks good and again like I said don't worry I've got a I see a couple of spots there where I dug the foam out a little bit too deep don't don't worry about that because we're putting the uh, wax paper underneath we're not not going to glue our plane to the table okay all right so now what we need to do i just cut out you know it's just essentially a square rectangle i don't know six by eight whatever the dimensions don't really matter essentially what you, you know it depends a lot i guess on the size of your hand essentially what we're going to do we're going to mix up some epoxy in the middle and we're just going to fold this up so like a like a bit of a taco so let's get some epoxy down here Oops, 
near the end of this container. And we'll just make sure we got lots there. So again, just using a toothpick, I just give this uh, give this a nice nice stir just to get the uh, the two components really well mixed. All right, there we go. Okay, now if you don't want to get epoxy all over your hands, you know you can put. Uh, I don't know, rubber gloves on or disposable gloves, whatever. I don't, I don't really mind. The epoxy will, epoxy will wipe off. Um, so okay. So all we're going to do again, we're just kind of, kind of hold the uh, the wax paper with the glue, with the epoxy in the middle, sort of like a bit of a taco. Just put the uh, put the one end in, and then just start giving it sort of a gentle, a gentle twist, and then pushing it all the way through. What we're looking here is to put a nice, even coat of epoxy all the way around the. Uh, the um, the rod and again okay pull it out there making sure that the end gets some too don't don't necessarily throw that uh, throw that wax paper with the epoxy on it away just just yet okay so there we go we'll just rub the epoxy in there okay so once you've done this uh, Excuse me, I'm just going to get some paper towel. All right, so I'm just going to wipe this extra epoxy off my hands here right now. All right, so we've got that in there. So again, just like we did with the, uh, when we glued the, the two halves of the wing plate together, we're just going to lay that down uh, over top and then, you know, weight it, weight it down with some books or something heavy. What you want to do here is you want to make sure that the wing plate, uh, you know, when that epoxy is cured, that your wing plate is nice and flat and straight. Okay, so again, just like when we put the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the two pieces together, just let it sit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just towards the end of the day here now, I'm probably just going to let this sit and dry overnight to make sure that all that epoxy that's all around the... Uh, the carbon fiber is uh, good and hard, but I, you know, you probably within about a half an hour, it, it should be uh, good to go. So we're just going to leave that there, folks. Let that set up, and then uh, we'll get back into uh, the rest of the build. Okay. Hi everyone. So back, uh, back for the next stage. Uh, so I've done a little bit of work uh, um, that you know, just to kind of speed up this video process. Uh, I put some bamboo skewer, uh, just cut a section of bamboo skewer, put some in my, uh, my vertical stabilizers. Uh, again, it's the same exact same process as what I used when I put the uh, carbon fiber uh, rod in the wing. So just to give those a little bit of stiffness because uh, model plane foam tends to be a little bit um, flexible. Uh, I also did the same here in my elevons. You remember previously we'd already talked about making the mark here for our control horns. And then I just put some, again, some bamboo skewer. So it's made it, uh, you know, quite a bit stiffer uh, in my, for my elevons. Uh, the other thing that I've done is if you've watched the intro video, I showed that we were going to be using some uh, popsicle stick. This, this uh, section right here, this is actually going to go like this. So this is actually on the bottom of the plane. The, this, this slot here needs to be left open because the prop, part of the prop disc actually goes through this slot. So this gets a, to be a little bit weak, and because of where it's located on the plane, if you you know if you come in and sort of slam it down at a bit of a of a high angle of attack, it, it can very easily break right here at this area. So all I've done is I've just taken that popsicle stick, cut it in half, and then I've put uh, sandwiched the foam between two pieces of popsicle stick, and I've actually used again epoxy there. Uh, I like to use epoxy on anything that's uh, you know wood, carbon when I'm attaching it to the foam, foam to foam, you know, hot glue uh, works fine, but I find epoxy uh, really works best. And uh, again, I, I just did the same thing on both. So uh, you want to, you want to do that at some point in time. It's a lot easier to do it when these pe before these pieces are glued on. So uh, get yourself some popsicle stick or, uh, you know, I don't know, a piece of old gift card or something, just something that's going to be nice and stiff. And I've just put it right along the bottom of the foam there just to give it maximum, uh, maximum strength. So that's what we've done. All right, so I'm just going to show you, uh, I'm going to put the control horns in. 
Uh, I'm going to use epoxy again, but then I promise we're going to, get to after that, we're going to get to start using our glue gun for a while. Um, but anyway, so what I've done on the line where I, and I know this is going to be very hard for you to see, but uh, I'll try and do it from sort of this angle, is what I've, then what I've done is I've taken my control horn and I've just sort of pressed it down into the foam a little bit. And what you want to make sure is the hole, you know, you've got this very small hole here. Uh, you want to make sure that that hole is, um, is lined up right over the very center of the hinge. So right, right uh, dead center. And you want to make sure that that's on both sides. So what I've done then is I've just pressed, uh, pressed the foam in a little bit, you know, just to make a bit of a dent. I've uh, done that on both sides. And then what I like to do is I'll just, I mean, you can use any knife. I just find it's easier to use this little number 11 X-Acto knife. But if you don't have it, you can use any other knife. And what I do then is I just, I just gently sort of score the foam where I made that depression with the control horn. Just kind of score that. And then just using the tip of the knife, I just kind of pluck pluck some foam out there so the uh, the wood of the control horn will, will have a place to go down into the foam to make sure that it's nice and secure. Okay, so there we go. So we plucked a little out again. So again, we'll just do a quick dry fit. You know, press it, press it down. And again, making sure the hole is, uh, is lined up directly over dead center of the uh, of the hinge. Okay, so we've done that on both sides. So again, we're going to mix up uh, mix up a little epoxy. Get myself a toothpick here. Don't need a whole. Don't need to mix up a whole lot this time because we're not going to be using a whole lot just for two control horns. So that's probably enough there. Okay, so we'll give that a good stir. And then what I do is I just take some on the toothpick and I just kind of push it down into the little into the little groove that I've made in the foam. Okay? And I take the control horn again, place it down, push it in. You don't want to, you don't need to push it all the way through, but you want a good portion of that uh, that bottom piece to be down into the foam. And then what you want to do is just take again, take a tiny bit on your toothpick. And then just go along on both sides and, and build yourself up kind of a little seam of, uh, of epoxy so that it will bond right along that seam where the control horn's meeting the foam. Okay, and then we'll do all the same thing on the other side. A little dab down into the little channel. And again, we'll, you know, put wax, make sure we got wax paper underneath in case any of this uh, epoxy oozes through. Press it down. Make sure our holes aligned. You know, I try and make sure that the control horns are actually, you know, pushed down into the foam pretty much equally, so that you know, if you were to be able to draw a line, these two holes would be even, like they wouldn't be, you know, one one higher than the other, because that will make a difference on on how. Uh, how well your control surfaces move. And again, just put a little, little bit along the edge there. Okay, so there's our control horn. So uh, yeah, well, just and the other thing too is you know look at look at it uh, from behind. Make sure that uh, you know the control horns are are sitting perpendicular. You know you don't want you know the control horn sort of angled off to uh, to one side, but you know, it's pretty snug in the foam there now. So all we have to do now is uh, again, just let this epoxy sit and uh, set up and harden. You want to make sure that these are good and, uh, good and solid. The epoxy is good and hard before you start uh, mucking around with any other parts of the plane because you don't want to knock one of these things and not realize it. And then heard me come back and find out your control horns off at an angle because then it, you know, you essentially have to cut it out of the foam and that can make a real mess. So just, uh, just you know, I'll just let it sit here for uh, 
for a few minutes until the epoxy is good and hard and then uh, we'll get our hot glue gun uh, heated up and we'll start uh, getting some uh, major construction going on this now that we've got a lot of this fussy work uh, done on the wing plate uh, we should start making some serious progress uh, along the next few steps so we'll be back here shortly hi everyone I uh, just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping here on this uh, last part of our uh, wing plate construction I apologize for the very bad lighting uh, at the end of the last segment here. So what, I've, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you again uh, so in, in lighting conditions that show up. So I did, uh, like I mentioned, I have installed, hopefully you can see there a little more clearly, I have installed some bamboo skewer in my uh, Elvons there. Uh, you know, it's still a bit flexible, but far more stiff than they were before. Uh, control horns, uh, you, you saw me do that in the last part of the video. Uh, again, carbon, or uh, uh, bamboo skewer reinforcement in my uh, in my uh, vertical stabilizers. Uh, hopefully it shows up this time. I know this didn't show up really well. Here you can see where I put, uh, again, essentially all I did uh, again was take a regular size popsicle stick, just uh, uh, cut it in half, and then I put each half sort of on, the, on either side of this, this piece here where the prop is going to come through, and I put it right along the very bottom. And those are uh, on there nice and solid with epoxy. Now you could use probably, you know, any, you could use, you know, even put some bamboo skewer in there embedded in the foam, just like we did with the other reinforcement. I just happen to have some popsicle stick laying around, and I thought, oh, that'd be, you know, good and strong. It's a little heavier maybe, but it's, uh, you know, it's super solid there now. So popsicle stick on both sides there, sandwiching the foam. All right, uh, another couple of things that I did, and again, I apologize here. I'm dropping another uh, mod on you, but I, you know, as in my my senior moments here, uh, I, I'm starting to get through the fog because it's been quite a while since I built a MiG-29 and there were several things that uh, I remember as I progressed along through my builds uh, that, you know, I w oh, I wish I had done that a little differently and make it easier for me. So what I've done, I've already uh, installed my uh, uh, Velcro and I just used this, this is inexpensive uh, Velcro I get uh, from the dollar store. Uh, this is the uh, the furry side. Now it comes, you know, sort of in a flat package, and it's got these curves in it. So what I've done is I've I've, I've put six inches, um, uh, and how I measured that is I remembered that my sometimes my battery ended up being sort of right at the front of this uh, inner wall of the uh, nacelle. So I just made a little mark there, and then I measured back about uh, about six inches. Now, I find the best thing to secure my Velcro to my plane, even though this does have, you know, you peel the backing off, it has an adhesive on it, is to use, uh, I just use five minute epoxy. I've tried everything, I've tried hot glue, I've tried my, uh, <clears throat> you know, this stuff that I normally build with, and none of them seem to work. But uh, touch, touch wood epoxy seems to hold it on there really, really well. So all I did, again, same sort of thing, I just mixed up some epoxy, put a very thin layer down, peeled the backing off, put my uh, Velcro down and because you know you're going to have curves in there it'll actually start to lift up if you don't weight it down and then I just you know laid the wax paper down top and bottom put some books on it and uh, now my Velcro is nice and solid. Uh, what I've also done here is uh, this is the, the modification that I'm talking about more than anything is I in the uh, on the plan view which I mentioned in the intro video they, they kind of show uh, you know your battery sort of sitting maybe on its side on either side uh, Here because uh, let me just put this in here. And it'll make, uh, make more sense. So this is the You know the upper Upper part of the, the nose Fuselage the vertical part. So we'll just dry fit this in here So you see what I mean? So um, Yeah, so what they showed is you know you sort of have your battery on the side so if you have to fly with a 2200, I, I have a lot of 2200s, it's really hard to fit it in here on its side. And the other thing is, you know, this is not a, a, a real heavy plane with a lot of wing area. So what I found is if I put, set my battery on its side and sort of set it on one side of the center line, you know, my plane just didn't feel as balanced. So what I'm actually going to do, I ran, I ran the uh, Velcro back here about six inches. So what I'm, Oops, oh, well, <laughs> there, I just did it. I just did it for myself, um, being clumsy. But anyway, I'm going to show you the mark, a uh, couple of marks here. So I've made a mark uh, right here. So I'm just going to trim 
this, let's just pretend that this was all back in one piece before I snapped it off. So I'm just going to trim it cleanly right along there. So I'm still going to have this notch right, right here that's going to fit against the back of this slot here, um, right here for alignment. But by trimming this off, you know, it'll obviously be trimmed clean. Now I don't have anything, I can, I can lay my battery back flat and it's especially important like if you wanted to fly with maybe a lighter battery you know 1300 1500 you're probably going to have to have it back a little bit and then you could run into problems um, you know having to put your battery off to one side and the other thing is I just find by not having the bulk of this uh, piece sitting there like that it just makes it easier also to route my wires and get my wires taped down nice and flat so that they're not going to uh, interfere with the prop so what I'm going to do is I drew a section here, you can see I just extended back from this slot and I drew a, a section here about an inch and a half long and I'm just going to cut this piece of foam off, in fact I'll just do it right now here to demonstrate for you. So I'm just going to glue that right in there at, at the appropriate time and then that's going to act as another uh, gluing area for the uh, wooden motor mount when we go to put that on, okay? So anyway, I've already... <laughs> I've already part way done my mod there, I just need to, uh, to trim that up. Uh, another thing I just want to point out, this is uh, also a good time, sometimes the, uh, the prop slot here where the, the motor mount, this little uh, recessed area here where the motor mount's going to go, it sometimes, it's, it, uh, you know, depending on how the plans print off, it's a little bit narrower than, uh, you know, this, the the template that you get off the plans. I mean, this is obviously not the exact template that comes off the plans. But um, so what I did was I, I just measured things and I ended up having to trim, just very, very uh, carefully trim about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half off each side to get this to fit properly. So especially if you need to do some real delicate trimming, it's just a lot easier to do um, when the wing plate is laying flat. Uh, so that's, that's another thing that I did there. So yeah, so this is a good time if you, uh, you know, you don't have to do this mod if you don't want to, if you, you know, you want to put your battery to either side, uh, depending on what size battery you're going to use, then, that, then that's fine. But again, uh, this is going to just work out uh, a little bit easier for me, and it's not really going to affect the uh, structure at all once we get things, uh, uh, once we get things built up. So I've got my Velcro installed again because I had to put pressure on it. A lot easier to do with nothing, uh, no, none of the other structure there. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to get my, my, uh, my glue gun warmed up, get myself reorganized here, and we're going to come back and, and go into the next sort of big phase of the build, which uh, we're going to install all the stuff here on the bottom, the uh, nacelles, the bottom plate, and we're also going to start uh, installing our electronics. So, um, and what we'll do before we install them is I'll show you how I just uh, quickly check them to make sure that, uh, that everything's working. So that's going to be the next big big phase of the build and then yeah we're really drawn close uh, really drawn close to the end to uh, have ourselves a, a flyable MiG-29 version 1 so I'm um, gonna get rearranged here get set up and I'll be back with you in a little while